all right everyone let's dive into this because there's so much to unpack today trust me we've got a lot to discuss a lot to talk through as we always do so make sure you're comfortable grab a snack and settle in because this is going to be an interesting one Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well today. It's great to be back with another video. If you haven't already joined our growing community, hit that subscribe button right now. It's super easy. And you're not gonna wanna miss out on the daily consistent content I'm putting out. Seriously? It's a one-stop shop for everything we cover here. And your subscription ensures you stay in the loop every single day. Oh, and while you're at it, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and drop a comment below. Let's keep the conversation going because your thoughts are just as important as mine. Now, if you watched my recent video where I broke down that intense 62 page lawsuit, you already know we barely scratched the surface. There were so many layers to unpack and some of the details I mentioned were pretty heavy, right? It was definitely one of those situations where I didn't want to overwhelm you guys all at once. There was just so much information that I had to be really careful about how I presented it bit by bit. But today I want to dive a little deeper. I didn't have time in that last video to cover everything. And I think this is a good opportunity to explore more of the key points. There's a lot we didn't get into yet. And I know many of you had questions, so I'm going to address those as well. I think it's important to give this topic the time and attention it deserves, especially because there's been a lot of interest and speculation surrounding it. So if you're here for the details and the breakdown, you're definitely in the right place. We're going to take a much closer look at what's really going on and what these documents are actually saying. There's a lot of important stuff buried in there that we need to discuss. Let's get into the specifics. And if you missed the last video, don't worry. I'll be doing a bit of a recap to bring everyone up to speed. Then we'll expand on some of the points that didn't get as much attention before. It's all going to tie together, so stick around because this video is going to provide the full picture and I know you guys love the details. All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. Now, let's take a closer look at one of the key individuals named in the lawsuit, Christina Corum. For those of you who might not be familiar with her role, Christina Corum was specifically mentioned as one of the defendants in this legal case, and I want to break down why this is significant. Now, without getting too technical, let's start by understanding what it means to be named as a defendant in a lawsuit of this magnitude. When you're named as a defendant, it means you're being accused of being involved in whatever actions or issues the lawsuit is addressing. It's serious, and it's something that can have long-lasting consequences both legally and reputationally. So when someone like Christina Corum is brought into the mix, it's a big deal. But let's dive deeper into why Christina Corum's involvement has caught so much attention. According to the details that have come out, there are certain allegations and claims being made about her role in the situation. I won't go into too many specifics for legal reasons, but it's clear from the lawsuit that she plays a central role in what's being discussed. Now, it's important to understand that being named in a lawsuit doesn't necessarily mean someone is guilty or has done something wrong. A lot of times people are mentioned because their actions are being questioned or investigated. So in Christina Coram's case, what we're seeing is that there are allegations made against her and it'll be up to the courts to decide what's true and what's not. I know a lot of you might be wondering, what does this mean for her moving forward? Well, being named in a lawsuit of this scale can be incredibly stressful and it often leads to a lot of speculation in the media. It's not uncommon for public figures like Christina Corum to face intense scrutiny and that can definitely affect how people view her both professionally and personally. However, we need to keep in mind that there's a legal process for a reason and everything will eventually be brought to light. In terms of what this means for the overall lawsuit, Christina Coram's involvement adds another layer of complexity. Anytime a new defendant is named, it raises more questions about how deeply interconnected this case is and how many people may be involved. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on how this develops because her role could end up being more significant as the case moves forward. Now, let's move on to another major figure in this entire case, Sean Diddy Combs. Diddy is right at the center of this lawsuit and his name has come up repeatedly in connection with some very serious allegations. This has been a major talking point, and I wanna dive into the details of what's been revealed so far. For those of you who might not be familiar with the situation, Diddy, who is a well-known figure in the music and entertainment industry, is being accused of some pretty shocking misconduct. There are claims surrounding his involvement in certain events, what some sources have referred to as freak-off parties. 
These events have raised a lot of eyebrows. And the allegations don't stop there. There are also claims about more serious alleged activities that have really caused quite a stir. And while these are just allegations at this point, the details that have emerged have left many people asking questions. Now, let's talk about one of the most concerning aspects of the lawsuit. It is alleged that Diddy was involved in trying to cover up these activities. According to the documents, there's a claim that Diddy reached out to his own mother in an attempt to convince the alleged victim, Ashley, to stay quiet. This is a huge claim and it suggests that Diddy may have been trying to get Ashley to accept hush money rather than report anything to the authorities. Again, these are serious uh, allegations and if true, they would raise even more questions about his involvement in this situation. But let's take a moment to really think about what that means. If it's true that Diddy tried to silence someone through hush money, it paints a troubling picture of how far he might have been willing to go to protect himself and his reputation. It also speaks to the larger issues of power dynamics and how influential people may use their status to try to manipulate situations in their favor. This is something that has come up in other high profile cases and it's always a delicate topic. Now I do want to remind everyone that at this point these are still allegations. Nothing has been proven yet in a court of law and Diddy like anyone else deserves the opportunity to respond to these claims and present his side of the story. Legal battles like this can be long and complex, so we'll have to wait and see how things unfold as more information comes to light. That being said, it's important to recognize the impact that these kinds of allegations can have, not just on the individuals involved, but on the public's perception as well. When someone as high profile as Diddy is named in a lawsuit like this, it can have ripple effects across the industry. People start to look at the situation differently and the conversations that follow can really change the narrative. Whether it's true or not, the fact that these allegations are out there is enough to spark major headlines and fuel a lot of speculation. So what happens next? Well, it's hard to say for sure. But one thing's clear, Diddy's legal team is likely preparing to respond to these allegations. And there's bound to be more information coming out in the days and weeks ahead. I'll be keeping a close eye on this case and updating you as more details emerge. So make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on to stay in the loop. Trust me, this is a situation that's far from over and there's a lot more to discuss. Now, we need to talk about another significant figure mentioned in the lawsuit, Janice Combs, who is none other than Sean Diddy Combs' mother. Her involvement in this case has come as quite a surprise to many and it's important to dive deeper into what's being alleged here because it adds another layer of complexity to an already intense situation. According to the lawsuit, Janice Combs was brought into the situation at a critical moment. There are claims that she was directly involved in trying to convince Ashley, the alleged victim, to accept hush money and keep quiet about the abuse that was happening. Now this is a serious accusation and if it's true, it suggests that Janice may have played a role in attempting to cover up some pretty significant wrongdoing. But let's break that down. The lawsuit alleges that Janice showed little to no concern for the well-being of Ashley and instead her focus was on making sure the situation was handled quietly essentially offering money in exchange for silence. If this is accurate, it paints a picture of someone who may have been more concerned about protecting her family's reputation than addressing the harm that was allegedly done. And that's a tough pill for many people to swallow, especially considering the family dynamics at play here. Now, let's be clear. At this stage, these are just allegations and nothing has been proven in court yet. But the fact that Janice Combs is even mentioned in the lawsuit has raised a lot of eyebrows. People are now speculating about her deeper involvement in the situation, especially because of her close relationship with Diddy and the powerful position the family holds. There are questions about how much she knew, how long she may have been aware of certain things, and whether her involvement goes beyond what's already been revealed. One thing that has been speculated is the possibility that Janice has become desensitized to this kind of behavior, perhaps due to her family's history and connections. Some people believe that her involvement in these allegations could be rooted in a kind of survival instinct, a desire to keep the family's image intact no matter the cost. There have been whispers about possible mafia ties, though these are just speculations at this point. But the idea here is that money and influence might have been used to smooth over any issues. And this has people questioning whether this is something that has happened before in similar situations. 
But we have to consider the broader implications here. If Janice Combs was actively trying to persuade someone to stay silent rather than encouraging the truth to come out, it raises serious ethical questions. How far would someone go to protect their family's legacy? And what does this say about the culture of silence that sometimes surrounds people with significant wealth and power? Of course, we have to wait for more information to come to light. There's still so much we don't know, and this lawsuit is far from being over. But Janice's name being mentioned in this context definitely adds another twist to an already complicated case. And it shows that this situation isn't just about one person, it involves a much larger web of individuals who may have played a role in what allegedly took place. Now, let's take some time to focus on Ashley, who is at the center of this entire situation. As the alleged victim in the lawsuit, her story is one of strength and resilience, and it's crucial that we break down exactly what's been reported so far. Ashley's decision to come forward has really shifted the conversation, and I think it's important to give her side the attention it deserves. From what we know, Ashley was allegedly subjected to some extremely harmful actions, and according to the lawsuit, there were multiple efforts to silence her. But despite all of that, Ashley refused to accept hush money. Think about that for a moment. She had the option to take a significant payout to stay quiet and not speak out about what allegedly happened to her. Many people, when put in that position, might have considered taking the money, especially when facing someone with a lot of power and influence. But Ashley chose a different path. By rejecting the hush money, Ashley made it clear that she wasn't going to be silenced, no matter how much pressure was put on her. That decision speaks volumes about her character and her determination to have her voice heard. It also shows that she wasn't interested in just walking away with a financial settlement. She wanted to expose what allegedly took place. That's a big deal, especially in situations where powerful individuals are involved. Let's think about what it takes for someone to come forward in a case like this. It's not easy. There's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and potential consequences that come with stepping into the spotlight and saying, this happened to me. And when you're up against powerful figures, the stakes are even higher. By refusing the hush money, Ashley demonstrated immense courage, knowing full well that her actions would likely lead to a legal battle and intense public scrutiny. Now, it's important to consider the broader impact of her decision. When someone like Ashley refuses to be silenced, it sets a precedent. It encourages other people who may be in similar situations to speak out, knowing that they too have a choice. It's a ripple effect. One person's bravery can inspire others to come forward with their own stories, and that can create a powerful movement toward accountability. But what's really striking here is the level of persistence and strength it must have taken for Ashley to stand firm in the face of these alleged attempts to buy her silence. The lawsuit claims that there were efforts to pressure her into staying quiet, and she said no. That's a huge moment in this case because it shows that she's not willing to back down and she's committed to making sure the truth comes out, whatever that truth may be. We also have to keep in mind that this is still an ongoing legal case and we're likely to see more information come to light in the near future. But as it stands right now, Ashley's refusal to take the hush money is a pivotal moment that could shape the course of this entire lawsuit. It's a bold move and it signals that she's not going to let this situation be swept under the rug. It's also worth noting that by rejecting the hush money, Ashley may have opened herself up to further challenges, both personally and legally. Being in the spotlight like this isn't easy, and it often comes with its own set of difficulties. But her decision to move forward with the lawsuit suggests that she's prepared to face whatever comes her way. That's a testament to her resilience and her desire for justice. All right, let's turn our attention to Ariel Mitchell, the lawyer involved in this case, whose actions have sparked quite a bit of conversation recently. Now, if you've been following the developments closely, you might already be familiar with her name. But for those who aren't, Ariel Mitchell is one of the attorneys working on this case. What's interesting here, and what's really caught people's attention, is some of the behavior she's displayed publicly, especially on social media. So let's break this down. As a lawyer, Ariel Mitchell is obviously expected to handle legal matters with professionalism and discretion. But over the course of this case, she's been taking to Twitter and making some pretty eyebrow raising statements. She's not just discussing the case itself, but she's also tweeting about other celebrities who may or may not be involved, speculating about their connections to the case. Now, this is where things start to raise some questions. For many people, seeing a lawyer tweet about potential celebrity involvement in a legal case can come across as unusual, if not unprofessional. 
Typically, lawyers are expected to keep the details of their cases confined to the courtroom or at the very least behind closed doors. So when you have a situation where someone like Ariel Mitchell is publicly tweeting and stirring up speculation, it definitely raises concerns about how the case is being handled from a legal perspective. Now, to be fair, we live in a world where social media has become a major platform for sharing information and engaging with the public, even for professionals like lawyers. It's not entirely out of the ordinary for lawyers to comment on their cases in public forums. But there's a fine line between keeping the public informed and creating unnecessary buzz or speculation, especially when the stakes are this high. One of the major criticisms that has emerged surrounding Ariel Mitchell's public behavior is that her tweets might be blurring that line. By tweeting about celebrities who might be involved, she's potentially adding fuel to the fire, causing more speculation and possibly affecting how the case is perceived both in the media and in the court of public opinion. And this raises the question, how does that impact the integrity of the legal process? Let's shift our attention to another surprising name that has surfaced in this case, The Game. Yes, the rapper. The Game has been mentioned by Ariel Mitchell in connection with Diddy, and it's definitely turning heads. What makes this so intriguing is the fact that The Game has allegedly been involved in some of these so-called freak-off parties that have been a major talking point in the case. According to Ariel Mitchell, the game's participation adds another layer of complexity to the situation and it's creating even more buzz around these allegations. Now what's even more interesting is that the game reportedly confirmed that Diddy was involved in an attempt to set up another well-known rapper Drake during an event in Los Angeles. This is a major revelation because it suggests that these alleged activities go beyond just private gatherings. They could have potentially included efforts to manipulate or harm other major figures in the entertainment industry. For fans of hip hop, this is a huge deal because both Diddy and Drake are iconic in their own right. And the idea that the game might have been involved in a plot against Drake is something that's sure to keep people talking. Adding yet another layer to the story is the game's past as a stripper. While this part of his history isn't often discussed, Ariel Mitchell has brought it up as a way to tie the game's background into the overall narrative. For some, this connection might seem like an unrelated detail, but in the context of the current allegations, it's being used to paint a more complete picture of how different figures in the entertainment world are linked. The game's history and reputation, along with these new allegations, have certainly added fuel to the fire, and it raises the question, just how deep do these connections run? Now, let's talk about Drake, one of the biggest names in music today. And yes, his name has also come up in this case in a pretty unexpected way. According to recent reports, Drake was allegedly the target of a plan orchestrated by none other than Diddy. This revelation has caught a lot of people off guard, and for good reason. We all know Drake and Diddy have had their share of ups and downs in the past, but this alleged plan takes things to a whole new level. It's not just about rivalry or competition in the music industry anymore. It's about something much bigger and far more personal. The alleged plot took place in Los Angeles and from what we've heard, it was part of a larger scheme involving several individuals in the entertainment world. Now, when you think about the weight that both Drake and Diddy carry in the industry, this kind of revelation feels even more shocking. These aren't just two random artists having a disagreement. These are two titans of the music world. So to hear that Drake was allegedly targeted in such a way makes you wonder about the lengths people might go to in order to protect their interests, power, or influence. What's even more interesting is the timing of this. Drake has been incredibly successful over the past few years, breaking records and dominating charts. Meanwhile, Diddy has remained a powerful figure behind the scenes. Could this alleged plan have been motivated by professional jealousy, a desire to maintain dominance, or something more personal? While we don't have all the details yet, what we do know is that Drake's name being mentioned in this context adds another level of intrigue to an already complicated story. And trust me, this is far from over. We'll definitely be hearing more about this as things unfold. Let's take a closer look at another prominent figure involved in legal battles similar to this one. Tony Busby, a well-known lawyer with a track record of taking on high-profile cases. If you've been following his career, you probably already know that Tony Busby has made quite a name for himself in the legal world, but his involvement in these types of cases is especially interesting. He's been representing individuals in some serious lawsuits, and while a number of those cases were initially dismissed, there's been talk about them being refiled. 
This refiling process is important to understand because it shows that even when cases don't succeed the first time around, they often come back with even more determination. Busby's persistence in getting these cases back into the courtroom is something we're going to want to keep an eye on. Now here's where things get even more intriguing. One of the criticisms that Tony Busby has faced is his use of pseudonyms for some of the alleged victims he represents. While this practice can be common in sensitive cases, especially those involving claims of abuse or misconduct, it's led to some speculation and raised eyebrows in the public sphere. The use of pseudonyms is meant to protect the privacy of the victims, but some have questioned whether it adds a layer of complexity or even confusion to the lawsuits. Critics have pointed out that it can make it harder for people to understand who's involved and what's really at stake creating a sense of mystery that's led to even more questions about the validity of certain claims. So while Busby's legal strategies might be effective, they also come with their own set of challenges. But let's not overlook the bigger picture here. Tony Busby has a reputation for taking on some of the most challenging cases. And whether you agree with his methods or not, he's clearly a force to be reckoned with in the legal world. The fact that some of his cases are being refiled speaks to the complexity and ongoing nature of these legal battles. This isn't something that's going to wrap up quickly. It's a long process and Busby seems to be committed to seeing it through to the end. As more information comes out, it's going to be fascinating to see how these cases evolve and what impact Busby's tactics will have on their outcomes. So stay tuned because there's definitely more to come when it comes to his role in these lawsuits. Let's dive into one of the most significant aspects of this entire situation, Cassie's lawsuit. Now, if you've been following the story, you already know that this lawsuit is a key element that's drawing a lot of attention. Unlike some of the other cases that have been circulating, Cassie's lawsuit stands out for a few reasons, one of the main ones being its credibility. From what's been revealed, this is not just another allegation. It's a detailed, well-documented case that many people are taking very seriously. And as more information comes to light, the disturbing nature of what's alleged has really made it clear why this lawsuit is so crucial to understand in the bigger picture. One of the reasons Cassie's lawsuit is being seen as highly credible is because of the extensive details that have come forward. The claims she's making aren't vague or general, they're specific and they paint a very unsettling picture of what may have taken place. This isn't the kind of lawsuit that you can easily dismiss or ignore. The information that's been shared so far suggests that Cassie has put a lot of effort into making sure every aspect of her experience is documented. And that level of thoroughness is part of what's making this case stand out. It's disturbing on many levels, and it's clear that her lawsuit has the potential to cause significant ripple effects both legally and within the public sphere. What's even more important to consider is the impact this lawsuit could have moving forward. Cassie's decision to come forward with such a detailed and credible case could inspire others who may have had similar experiences to do the same. It's not uncommon for one person's bravery to spark a larger movement, and we've seen that happen time and time again in similar situations. Cassie's case could very well be the tipping point that leads to broader conversations about accountability and justice. As this lawsuit unfolds, there's no doubt that more people will be paying attention and it will likely shape the narrative in ways we can't yet predict. So if you're following this story closely, this is definitely a key development to watch. And that wraps up today's breakdown. If you made it this far, thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate your support. Now, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you're always in the loop when I drop new content. Trust me, there's so much more to come on this story and you don't want to miss it. If you enjoyed this video or found it insightful, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow and brings this content to more people. And of course, I want to hear from you. Drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts on everything we discussed today. What do you think will happen next? Let's get a conversation going. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.